this is just a short video uh, explaining a couple of the quiz questions because I think they can be kind of confusing. Uh, the first example I'm going to go through, it's very much like question 2B on the quiz that you'll see. So the first thing we want to do with this question is you could look at it. You could multiply the n two numbers, negative 2 times negative 6, which would be 12. And you could try to find two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to negative 22, of which there are none. The next thing you want to do is you want to factor out the GCF, see if there's a common factor between all these values, negative 2, negative 22, and negative 6. I can see right away that the common factor, the GCF, is going to be negative 2. So when I factor out that negative 2, I divide each term by negative 2. You have to leave that term, though, that or that value of negative 2 in front of the brackets. Otherwise, you change the entire value of the question. So I divide each term by negative 2. So the first term I get is x squared. The next term I get plus 11x, because negative 22 divided by negative 2. And the last term, negative 6 divided by negative 2, is just a plus 3. And that's it. You could now look at the inside and say, okay, are there two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 11? Because now I've eliminated that term in front of the x squared. It makes it much simpler. Of course, there are no two, num there are no two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 11. However, this is my final answer, and this is how you're going to leave it on the quiz. It's not this exact same question, but it's very much like this question. And that's question 2B. The last question 3, I'm going to show you how to start it, how to set it up. Because the first question, part A, asks you, what is the factored form? And I want complete factored form. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm not, I'm first I'm going to look for a GCF. Because this is huge. 16 times 160 would be massive. I don't want to do that. So the GCF is actually negative 16. Okay, so we're going to factor out the negative 16 first. So I factor out a negative 16, and then I go, again, I divide each term by that. If you get stuck, you can always just use a calculator or check first to see that 16 actually does divide into everything. So 144 divided by 16 is 9. Great. So remember, I'm factoring a negative 16 as well. So I'm left with t, positive t squared, which is good because this will help us factor further later. Factoring out a negative 16 from a positive 144, so that's negative because we're dividing a positive by a negative value. So I get, uh, that was my 9, so minus 9t. And then the last term, plus 160 divided by negative 16 is minus 10. Now look at the inside and ask yourself, can I factor this further? What two values multiply to negative 10 add to negative 9? However, please keep the negative 16 out front. If you don't keep that negative 16 out in front, like I said in the first uh, example, you change the entire value of the question. So that, that value must stay there. That negative 16 has to stay out there. Then you keep what, uh, and you work out what the factored form of the inside is. Finally, for part B, I'll just let you know, just plug that value, the 5.6 seconds. Usually, if you're going to do these types of questions, plug it into the original equation, because if you made a mistake somehow doing the factoring, then your answer for part B is going to be completely wrong. But if you plug the value into the original question or equation, you know it's got to be right. Anyways, I hope that helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions.